Hello there fellow humans, today we're going to have a look at all of the new balance changes in World of Tanks Blitz for the next season. Now I've already seen on Discord server that some of the reactions are quite negative, which is fully understandable, because a lot of these balance changes are simply just moving numbers around. For example, we start off with the mouse, which gets 0.2 seconds better reload. You could just, like, leave that, basically. The Grill 15 gets a nice buff, a better reload time by 0.3 seconds. Some rotation speed by 5 degrees, which is going to be very useful, a little bit better power to weight ratio, and some more max speed. But again, most of these changes, they're just nothing burgers. They're not going to change the fundamental ways these vehicles are going to be played. However, the KPZ-50 gets 0.4 seconds better aim time. However, it loses some penetration for it, so we're just rebalancing it slightly. The VK-90 gets better aim time, worse turret rotation speed, and also worse tra traverse dispersion so again we're moving numbers around for the sake of it the vk72 it has slightly less penetration by four millimeters that's gonna change everything but the reload is gonna go up by one second so maybe that is a change that is worth noting there but now the leopard one gets quite a bit longer reload time 0.5 seconds it loses 50 hit points it loses power to weight ratio it loses rotation speed and it also loses a degree of gun depression so that is quite a big nerf towards the Leopard. Now it gets gear oil and adaptive concealment mechanic, but that is in no way to compensate for the things that it actually loses. And I am very much not a fan of balancing with consumables. I'm, like, it just makes the game more difficult for everybody to play and everybody to learn. And also these changes for the sake of change are also making the game more difficult for everybody to learn because you have to remember new tank numbers every season. And that obviously is very terrible because the majority of the player base Probably doesn't even, well, honestly, the majority of the player base doesn't even know the numbers to begin with. But if you actually want to try and play well and get better, you're going to have to remember new numbers every single season, which is not very nice. Now, the E100, again, 4 millimeters of penetration, 20 alpha damage. Uh, these are all nothing bugs. Now, the 128 millimeter is going to get slightly better, which is a nice thing to see. Like the, the stock on the E100 is going to get better, which is not too bad. The E50M is going to get faster reload however its shells are going to be flying significantly slower and it is also going to get reactive armor while some of the armor values of the vehicle especially on the side are gonna get buffed which means it is going to be even better at side scraping so as a fan of the e50m that thing is probably gonna be absolutely epic the act pants 100 it's gonna lose a couple of hit points gonna lose some aim time and it's gonna lose some reload time I'm fine with that, but it's going to gain 10 millimeters of armor at the turret. So, yeah, again, the vehicle's not going to change how you play. You now have to aim half a second longer. Congratulations. Then we go to the Japanese vehicle. And the STP-1 gets longer reload, which is not really that great. Shell's also going to fly quite a bit slower, uh, which isn't really going to be a problem if you know how to adapt the shells. The, you're only going to have a problem if you have a fast-moving target that you have to track. And it's also going to lose some power to weight ratio, but gain some max speed. The Type 71 is going to lose reload time for some reason. It's already not a good vehicle, but the alpha damage of the gold shell is going to go from 360 to 400. So that's not too bad. It's also going to gain 5 millimeters of penetration. The Hori is going to gain speed on its shell. It's going to lose some reload time, which is very good for it. More DPM. And it's also going to lose some rotation speed, which isn't really that great, but... It has more DPM now. The Americans, where the M48 Patton now has worse reload time, which is something I don't understand because I think the Patton's one of the most well-balanced tanks in the game. There's no reason to change anything about it. And this is kind of what, what annoys me about these season updates, right? Like, you have a formula. If you have a vehicle that works well, right? This is true for other games as well. Like, if you have a game, if you have a vehicle that works as it does, changing it is very unlikely to actually make it any better. So the M60 is going to have worse reload. The M48 pattern is going to have worse reload. They are going to gain useless consumables. Ooh, ooh. And the, the pilot is going to get more hit points, is going to get better power weight ratio, and it is going to get marginally better reload time. So, hey, a buff to a terrible premium tank. I appreciate that. That is very nice right there. Sheridan's going to gain 5 millimeters of penetration, 2 kilometers an hour max speed. It's going to gain 10 and 5 alpha damage, respectively but it is going to lose some power to weight ratio. We're moving numbers around again, are we? Now, the t and Heavy, it's going to turn slower, it's going to aim slower, but it is going to move slightly quicker in both directions, forwards and backwards. So again, we're just moving numbers around. 
When are there going to be changes that actually do something? Well, does the Concept 1B in 0.2 second better reload time change something? Eh, slightly. It has now a little bit better DPM, and the XM66F is also now getting APCR shells and slightly better reload as well. T110E4 loses some power to weight ratio, loses some rotation speed, loses view range, and gets better aim time, but gets sandbag provisions. We're balancing on consumables again, are we? That's uh, always great to make the game more complicated and less easy to play, which again, in turn, is going to make teams play worse. So, great change. Rotation speed on the E4 is going to get slower, it's going to get more view range, it's going to get less aim time, and it's going to get faster reload. So again, we're not buffing and nerfing anything. We're just moving numbers around. We're making one side of the tank better, we're making the other side of the tank worse. And uh, basically, everyone has to somehow relearn how to play the vehicle slightly differently. So, I agree with the consensus of the community that it is mostly downvotes so far. Because what the heck is this? Now, the aim time for the ore is going to go significantly up here by over a second almost. And the power weight ratio... Barely going to change, max speed's going to change by 3 kilometers, and the front plate is going to get 15 millimeters less armor, which means the front plate is going to get easier to pen by some vehicles, and the E6 is going to lose some power to weight ratio, but gain some rotation speed. Now, the E6 is a heavy arm, and it kind of relies on its speed and maneuverability to get around places and, for example, hunt medium tanks, because if you try to brawl with this thing against another well-armored heavy, you're kind of doing it wrong. The Capola, however, is going to get 28 millimeters of extra armor, so that is going to help you deflect some shells. Obviously, if the majority of the tier 10 penetration is going to be somewhere around 250 millimeters, so your chance of getting penned is no longer 80%, it's now going to be somewhat 50%, so not too bad there. Now, the MX-30B loses power to weight ratio, loses reload time. It was terrible, and they made it good, and now they decided they made it a little bit too good, so it's going to get brought down again just slightly. And the 50B's aim time is going to get even worse, which is um, already great. And its premium, no, its HE penetration is going to change by 4 millimeters. Wow, why do you even write that there? It's a, like, you don't even have to, you don't have to write that on a spreadsheet. You're just wasting the intern's time that has to write that. Like, <laughs> nobody's going to, nobody's going to notice that ever. But anyway, FCM 50T. It's going to get a pretty decent buff to the reload time, so hey, that's lovely. A, another terrible premium tank that was awful, just like the T25 Pilot, is getting some love. So that I definitely approve of. And the MXM4 54, yeah, that's a typo. The reload time is going to get better, so nice there. Not going to change much, though. I'm still not going to recommend it because it's absolutely massive. The bad chat is going to get worse. Reload time. AP shell is going to be replaced by an APCR shell, and then there are going to be some changes to the 100 millimeter, but nobody should actually ever use that. So ignore that. Now the Fosh 155, 155 millimeter is going to get 560 alpha damage, and the, the 600 alpha damage is going to get 620. So not too bad right there. Um, obviously, real time is going to go up, not going to change much, but the power to weight ratio, oh boy, that is a significant change. There's going from 20 to 14. This is what I'm talking about when we're talking about actual changes. That's really going to impact the vehicle drastically. Not in a good way, but it is actually going to impact the vehicle drastically. However, the reverse speed is going to go up by 2. So, there's that. Now, the armor, however, is going to increase on the upper plate and the range finder at the top of the vehicle. So, it's going to make that a lot harder to pen, but the lower plate is going to get thinner. So, it's going to get better and worse at the same time, but basically the Fosh is going to get nerfed because that power to weight ratio is going to go down significantly. Then we have the Chinese setup right here. We're going to start at the bottom here. The 113 is going to lose some power to weight ratio. It's going to gain 100 hit points. Yeah, cool. The 113 GFT is going to lose quite a significant amount of engine power. And I have a question. Why do some state power to weight ratio and others state engine power? Can't you find a figure that works for all of them? Maybe. I don't know. That's just a suggestion. The real time is going to go up. Rotation speed is going to go down. But the alpha damage is going to go up by 10. So that is a nerf to the vehicle. And not just a we're moving numbers around now. So big change here. Just like to the Fosh as well. It's going to get nerfed. Personally, I don't care about tank stores anyway. So I'll leave it as it is. And I'm not going to 
rate my judgment on that. The 5A is going to get worse power to weight ratio. It's going to get better rotation and slightly better dispersion and 50 more hit points. Maybe buffing the 5A right now is probably a bad idea, but it's not really getting buffed, so it's fine. So maybe, maybe, maybe leave that one out. Maybe ignore that one for a while. Now, 1 to 1, it's going to get a slight nerf. 9.1 seconds reload instead of 8.7. Battle weight ratio, however, is going to go up slightly. Uh, the big problem with the 1 to 1 really is its movement inaccuracy. So nothing's really made there. But now you have to reload quite a little bit longer, which is not very nice. But you still have the high alpha damage. So as long as you're able to trade your shells effectively back and forth, that is going to be not really that big of a difference. Unless you're obviously brawling with a leopard, which uh, you already shouldn't. But then we have the 1, 3, 2, 1. Right there. It's going to get 10 meters of my view range. Okay, half a second better reload. That is a good change right there because that vehicle is basically in the middle of nowhere. It also gets 2 millimeters less standard uh, premium penetration and the 5 millimeters less standard penetration. Much change. Wow. But the reload time is quite a big change there. So maybe this thing's now going to be relevant. Possibly. I mean, probably not. There are still better vehicles out there, even after this change. So if you're thinking of grinding it, just grind the 62A. Unless the 62A is getting nerfed, then we'll, we'll see about that later. Now, the 114 SP2 is going to get a slight armor buff, but that's not really going to change anything. The side plate's 10 millimeters. That might have some impact if you're facing the enemy head on, but obviously, as soon as you turn the turret of the vehicle, it's still going to go down to a penable level. The 1 to 1B is going to get a slight power to weight ratio increase and a little bit of armor buff, which is not too bad because that vehicle is in the middle of nowhere. Um, I think it should have deserved a bigger buff, an actual change to the vehicle. Um, but uh, you can just shuffle numbers around and, and pretend that you changed it. Basically, type 59. That's nice to see. A lot better reload, uh, more HP and also better armor. Another terrible tier 8 medium tank that is being elevated quite a little bit together with the pilot and the fcm so that is a good change i appreciate that very nice now the british vehicles two and five b again moving numbers around doesn't matter the 183 uh well it's getting worse in time which i appreciate it's, however it's getting less shot dispersion which i don't appreciate because any buff to the 183 is bad any nerf to the 183 is good that's my opinion basically about the 183 then the 4005 gonna get way worse in time again 10 meters of your range these things don't make a difference. Like, you're not going to actually find a, a real tangible difference in battle that actually 10 meters of view range are going to make, right? So, yeah. Anyway, Badger. Worse rotation speed. Quite a lot worse. So that's going to turn like a boat now. However, the train crossing capacity is going to go up quite a lot for the first number, which should be hard ground, if I can read the number correctly. However, and the view range again is going down by 10 meters, and the view range of the 2 and 5B is going up by 5 meters. Yay! Wow, that changes nothing. So, anyway, do we have do we have real changes here? All right. 4202. Oh, nope. Nothing there. It's going to get a little bit better aim time, but that's about it. The others just don't really matter. But the Vicar's Light is a vehicle that needs desperate change, which obviously it is going to get. The alpha damage is still going to stay at a absolutely terrible 300, but it is going to get massively better reload time. It's going to be get better power to weight ratio. It's going to get better aim time. And uh, the shot dispersion is going to go up, unfortunately, which is quite nice, uh, quite sad. But um, generally, this is a vehicle that needed a buff and uh, it got one. So no complaints there. Super Conqueror, for the same time. Uh, it also reverses slower. At 14 instead of 16, again, these are not going to be making much differences because by the time you reach 14 kilometers an hour, you should already be behind cover anyway. If you don't, you peaked out too far. However, real time is going to go down, so that's very nice. And uh, obviously, I'm going to maybe recommend it. Now, here is the big one. Here's the one I'm mad at. Chief of Mark 6, rotation speed, going down, aim time, worse, penetration. It's going to go to 200 on the premium round. Alpha damage, 400, 470, 515. Because instead of APCR, it's going to have premium hash. I don't like that. It shouldn't be like that. Give it its real ammunition back. Thank you. So then we have the Soviet vehicles. And, uh, well, again, 268 version 4, pointless change. I say, well, 30 millimeters of premium penetration that it loses. That's a Pretty significant, so that's actually noteworthy. So slight nerf to the uh, IS-8 there. 
Um, the ST1, same thing there. Te uh, 20 mils of pin penetration less. That is actually noteworthy. I don't know why it's done. I have no idea. The object 260, it is getting slower turret rotation speed, but slightly better reload. So we're again moving numbers around and the dispersion is going to get worse. So it, nothing's going to change, basically. You're just going to... Like most of these changes, like 10 meters of view range, 5 millimeters of penetration, if you just simply play the battle and you didn't know that these numbers changed, you would not notice. Like that that's the kind of changes we're talking about here mostly. Like the 268 version 4, it changed the penetration from 265 to 270. You're not going to notice that in battle unless you know what the number is. So we're just, again, we're just moving numbers around and we're keeping the intern busy having to make spreadsheets. Like, come on. Please. Object 268, however, gets a lot, little bit worse rotation speed by 4 degrees. So a lot of tangster sort of nerfs, basically. It's also going to get some penetration nerfs, but as I already said earlier, I don't care what happens to tangsters. I'm not going to play them anyway. If they get nerfed, that's good for me. Object 140 is one of the vehicles that I've been hating on for quite a while. It is my most played tank and used to be my favorite tank, but then Wargaming decided to turn it into something not very nice. Obviously, 10 degrees, uh, 10 alpha damage now comes back on. You know, you reduce the alpha from 310 to 300, and then you buff it again from 300 to 310. That way, you can make two balance changes for the sake of nothing. Penetration is going to go up. 8 millimeters. That's decent. Short dispersion is going to go down. Aim time is going to go up. And the reload time is going to get just ever so slightly worse. So you're not actually buffing the vehicle, you're just... And I'm going to start with the 62A because I mentioned it earlier, and it's going to get a little reload nerf. So it's still going to be better than the Object 140, let's be honest. But slight nerf there. I think that one's justified. 62A is a quite strong vehicle at the moment. So perfectly fine there. 907. That one needs a little bit of love. It's not going to get it, however, because it's going to get a nerf in rotation speed. It's going to get a nerf in reload time. And it is, however, going to get some better power to weight ratio. So we're shuffling again, as always. I mean, 0.2 seconds, you might notice that a little bit, but not really. 0.4 seconds, however, on the T100LT, you're going to notice that a little bit more, especially in the DPM section, right? Power to weight ratio, it's going to go up. Penetration is going to go up. So a little buff there for the T100LT, which I think is a good change. The thing, they definitely need some love. However, why the shot dispersion was also changed, I don't get it. Just leave the first three, buff it a little bit. It kind of needs that. It wasn't really that good. Then we have the BPM that is going up from 4.1 to 4.5, um, which I think is probably going to be the aim time. If uh, Yeah, it's probably the aim time. Then the reload. So the reload time is going down. Quite nice. I think the object's already very strong, so that's just going to make it just a little bit better. Wasn't necessary, but it's going to be fine. And the train crossing capacity is also going up. So the 777 is going to be a vehicle that you might want to have in your garage in a future update. i 7s lower plate going to get nerfed. The reload time is going to go down. Penetration is going to go down by a whole whopping 4 millimeters. I don't know what to say, but low plate is going to be easier to, to pen now. It's 11 millimeters. Don't be fooled by the 9. It's just 11 millimeters less. But it is an angled plate, so... If you change the armor value of an angled plate, the actual effective difference is obviously going to be quite a bit bigger than that. So, nerf to the i7's lower plate, I think that's fair. The i7's lower plate is already very strong, so I think that's a quite fair nerf there. Generally, I think these are okay. Like, we're just moving numbers around, but some of them, at least in the Soviet section here, they have purpose. So that's that's fine by me right here. Let me go to the object uh, 263. I don't care about the tank. Is it getting nerfed? Yeah, a little bit. So whatever. So IS-4. Better reload time. Definitely needs it. Also, 9 millimeters more front armor right there. A little bit more HP. A little bit better power to weight ratio. I think that is also very decent change here. Good change. Um, because the IS-4 was nerfed to hell the last time. And now they're buffing it again. Like, what, what, what's the point here? What's the point? Like, you know if it, you buff it, you know if it, you know, just leave it. Just leave it. Like, you can actually balance the game better if you leave the tanks that are fine and then change the tanks that are not fine, that are too good, that are too bad. Huh? This is just my opinion. 
don't know. So T22 medium is going to get better reload. Uh, it's going to get pa better power weight ratio. So basically a buff to that thing. Lower plate's going to get thinner. The rest of the armor is going to get slightly thicker. Um, so I think I might have to start recommending the T22 medium again after this one. Um, because it is going to get buffed a little bit. It's also going get, to get tungsten shells, which I personally don't use ever. So if you like tungsten, here's another reason to get the T22 medium. It might now have a even better standing in the Soviet medium department again. So not too bad there. Then we have the European tech tray right here. Kranwagen. We're changing a little bit to the reload, making it worse. Which is weird, because it's already terrible. But the intraclip is going to get a little bit better. But we're changing the alpha damage slightly up by 10. So we're moving numbers around again. Yeah, change the reload, change the alpha damage, keep the DPM the same. Wow, 10 alpha damage, how much difference that's going to make? It's not going to make any difference whatsoever. Progetto, going to get slower, going to get more HP, going to get worse reload. So the Progetto is essentially getting nerfed by quite a bit. It is going to get a better dispersion, but other than that, you're nerfing the DPM for the second and the first shell quite a bit. The third shell, 4.7, that's going to stay the same. Rhinoceronte, nothing burger. We're just going to get less accurate. So just aim your shells better, basically. You're not going to notice the difference between 336 and 355 in a battle. You're not going to notice the difference between 0.3 and 0.35. You're going to notice that difference. But that one, if nobody told you, you might feel it a little bit. But you're not going to notice in most cases. 90% of the player base is not going to notice changes like this. And this is what I'm talking about here. It's not about, am I going to notice the change? It's about, is the average player going to notice the change? Is there actually anything of value brought by this change? And I would say the average player is not going to notice a 0 0.02 dispersion change. They're not going to notice. So, why? You could, you know, spend your time doing better things than that. Anyway, 60p, better rotation speed, lower... Another slide said reverse speed, now it says speed back. Wargaming, intern, what's, what's the Wargaming intern doing? Come on, what are you doing, intern? I don't know if, I don't know if, the in, if it's the intern, but these slides kind of feel like they're made by the intern. Just, if they're not, then... Oops. CS63, however, is gonna get a buff. Good. Because that thing was absolutely awful. Better reload, better power to weight ratio, better dispersion, better maximum speed, slightly lower rotation speed for some reason. I don't know why that will be done. Like you nerf all of the things and then you're like, oh, but you can't have all the nice things. And then you're gonna nerf something. So you could have just left the rotation speed as is. The thing needs love. And it got some love. So. That is not too bad. I appreciate that. STVK getting nerfed slightly. It's fair. I'll take it. Then the Minotauro. Yeah, worse reload by not a lot. Well, actually, better reload by not a lot, but uh, also loses alpha damage. So we're changing nothing. However, the lower plate is going to get 50 millimeters less armor. That is a big change right there. And I think it is a very justified and fair change because petting the Minotaur from the front was pretty difficult and you would pretty much need premium rounds all the time. So I think changing it from 260 to 210 is a good change and then making that uh, better, which is very nice. Now, the SMV CC64, you had to introduce the premium version. So now obviously, so that people buy the premium version, you've got to nerf the tech tree version. Now, nah, kidding. The SMV CC64, was way too good, I think. So increasing the reload by a second. Armor goes down a little bit. So good change again here. We have a vehicle that was a little bit too good that is being reined in and goes down again. This is the kind of change that are actually useful and necessary, in my opinion, whereas most of the other changes are just change for the sake of change. We're just shuffling numbers around, right? Just so we have. Now we get to a big one, the VZ55. It is going to... I've been talking about this since the vehicle's release. It should have always been the Soviet-style version of the Yo, right? You have a Soviet-built-ish vehicle, right? 
like in the style of an i7, a 113, whatever, but with a your like gun. That's what it's going to get now with a four shell intra clip, which I think is a bit long, but that's about the maximum I would allow. It's obviously a lot longer than that on the yaw. So you have a very nice balance uh, and the opposite side there. I don't know. I don't think it's a bad change. I think the share reload should be a little bit lower, um, but adding this two shot auto loader to the VZ is, I think, definitely the correct decision. So, I don't know. Put in the comments, what do you think about all the changes so far? Do you agree that most of them are very pointless? Some of them are good, some of them are bad, but most of them are simply pointless. Like the TVP, it gets 310 alpha damage again, back, that it already had once. Wow. And we have the Karo 45T, who is gonna get worse reload. I don't really get, like, I think the Karo is a terrible vehicle, as it is. Um, but, okay, I'm fine with that. It's also gonna get provisions. I never see any of these provisions ever being removed. I always see them being added to vehicles. Like, at some point, every vehicle is gonna have any of these provisions. Like, what's, what's the point of those? They're just making the game more complicated to balance, and uh, they're making it harder to learn, which is bad for the game, because the more complex you make the game, the worse the teams are going to get, because the average player isn't going to bother learning any of these provisions, consumables, equipment, whatever, so you're going to make the match quality worse by increasing the complexity of the game. That's just how it works. ML, 4mm penetration, wow. And a little bit faster shells. Wonderful. Isn't that wonderful? Right there. <sighs> well, that was half an hour of my time gone down the sink. How do you think the changes should have gone down? Should there be less changes and therefore good changes? Or should Wargaming just shuffle around numbers all the time and do whatever? And obviously, some of the changes are very good. I think the Visa 55 getting an autoloader is a good idea. Could have been a little bit done better in terms of the autoloader, but I think like buffing uh, terrible mediums like the Pilot or the Type 59, those are really good and necessary changes. And Wargaming should, in my opinion, focus a lot more on changing those types of vehicles that really need change, right? Rather than just looking at Tier 10 and being like, hmm... Random number change, random number change, random number change. Because there are, in tier 7, 8, 9, there are a lot of tanks in there that need buffs, nerf, all of those kind of things. But no, we're just looking at tier 10, we're shuffling numbers around for no reason whatsoever. So, what do you think? Am I wrong? Am I right? I don't know. Put it down in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next one. Goodbye.